Welcome to the Compliance Resource Channel. Compliance Resource is a source of compliance assistance for financial institutions across the country. In this video, our Director of Compliance, Robin Cooper, is going to cover a blog article that we published about Treasury indexes. Hi, today we're looking at a blog article that we published on the Treasury indexes. If you'd like to take a look at this blog article or others that we've published, please visit our website at jackscompliancesource.com. Once you're to our homepage, click on Free Services and then scroll down to Jack's blog. In the blog, you'll find this article along with numerous other articles on compliance topics related to financial institutions. Also, you'll be able to sign up to receive future notifications when we publish future blog articles. Again, the article that we're talking about today is Treasury Indexes weekly and monthly averages, where did they go? If you are a financial institution that offers adjustable rate mortgages and perhaps uses one of the Treasury Index weekly or monthly averages as your index, then you may have noticed that the index is not, the weekly and monthly averages are not available in the same place that you've historically found them. And so that's what this article talks about and that's what we're going to be discussing today. Now we all know that as at as an adjustable rate mortgage, you use an index, and that could be the treasury index or some other index, along with the internal margin that you set at your financial institution in order to determine what the interest rate will be for your adjustable rate mortgages. Now, many of you use the treasury index, one of those treasury indexes, um, weekly or monthly averages of that index as your index for your ARM loans. And again, historically, you've been able to access those weekly and monthly averages on the H-15 report or that selected interest rate report published by the Federal Reserve Board. Now, just to refresh your memory on what that report looks like, I'm going to pull up a report that was published back on September the 19th of 2016. And as you can see here, it lists the different indexes along with the, as you can see there, the weekly average and the monthly average as well. Where those arrows are, it points out the weekly average and also the monthly average. So that is an example of what you would have seen on the H-15 report um, back in September of 2016. And this is just a snippet of the report. Um, it, there, it, the report is lengthier than this, but this is just to give you an idea of what that report looked like. Now, back on October the 11th of 2016, the Federal Reserve Board discontinued the publication of these weekly and monthly averages directly on the H-15 report. And some of you may have been unaware of this change. We, I know we received questions on this from people asking if, this was, if these weekly and monthly averages were going to continue to be available and if these financial institutions, they were wondering if they needed to find a different index to use for their ARM loans. So the good news is these weekly and monthly averages are still out there. The Federal Reserve Board did announce on September 26th, a couple of weeks prior to this change, that these weekly and monthly averages for these indexes were not going to be available on the directly on the H-15 report as of October 11th and going forward. So they did let us know a couple of weeks prior to the change, and they also told us where we could find these weekly and monthly averages. So they are available on the Federal Reserve Board's website and um, through a program called the Direct or the Data Download Program. So that is where you can find it on the website. We're going to walk you through how to access this data download program and how to look up a sample index, uh, a sample weekly index. So we'll do that now. We're going to pull up the H15 report that you've been accustomed to looking at. Again, this is just a portion of the report. It's not the full report, but this report is from January 19th of 2017. You'll notice there is not the weekly um, and, and monthly average listed on this report. Those columns are missing, but this is what the report looks like now. And then if you scroll to the very bottom of the report, you'll see this note. And this is a note letting you know that the weekly and monthly averages are available through the data download program on the Federal Reserve Board's website. And they give you the link to access that data download program. So you'd click on that link within that note. Now I suggest if you're accessing the data download program on a consistent basis to look at these weekly and monthly averages for these indexes, that you would go ahead and 
save the direct address, so it's a direct web address for the data download program, perhaps to your favorites, um, but so you'll be able to access that easier rather than going through that H15 report. Once you are to the data download program page, you can um, select different options in order to obtain different historical data and different, different data through this data download program and the Federal Reserve Board has some good Q&As out there on how to uh, how to utilize the data download program in order to get the information that you need. But we're going to do a sample today and so we're going to go over to section B on the on the <clears throat> web page that you see here. We're looking for a weekly average and we're going to so we're going to click on that bubble and then we're going to go to download. Once we click go to download, it's going to pop this page up. And this is a page letting us know that we have information in a package and it says that it has the option there to click on review package. So we're going to click that review package button and it's going to take us to this report. And this is a list of all of the indexes with their weekly averages. And so you're going to, this is again just a portion of the report that's going to show up on your screen when you click on this. But this is going to show you the indexes that are available, so you would scroll down until you find your index. And just, just for um, a sample purposes, we're going to select the market yield U.S. Treasury security at one year constant maturity. So again, we're looking at the market yield on U.S. Treasury securities at one year constant maturity, just for a sample, just for um, sample sake. So we're going to go to the left-hand column of that index and click on that hyperlink. Once we click on the hyperlink associated with the index that you're using, it's going to pull up a report of the weekly averages for that index. And again, when we click on that hyperlink, it's going to take us to this report, the market yield on U.S. Treasury securities at one year constant maturity. And so we can scroll down through there and find the weekly average that we are looking for. And again, you can see that the most recent date is January 13th of 2017, so it is a current weekly average, and so those weekly averages are still available out there even after they've been discontinued on that H15 report. I hope this was good information for you on how to find the weekly and monthly averages associated with the Treasury indexes on the Federal Reserve Board website through the data download program. Again, if you'd like to read this article or other blog articles that we've published, please visit our website at jackscompliancesource.com. Once you're there, click on free services, scroll down to Jack's blog, and there you'll find this blog article and numerous other blog articles on compliance topics related to financial institutions. And you, will, you can also sign up to receive notifications for future blog articles that we publish. Thanks for joining us.